everyone. Thank you for watching this live broadcast tonight coming from uh, the sanctuary here at Calvary Temple, Assembly of God. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged by our time in the Word tonight. Uh, we invite you also to tune in again this coming Sunday morning at 1030 as we worship the Lord in song and sermon. And uh, we thank you for your support. We thank you for your prayers to our uh, home church here, to this body of Christ here at Calvary Temple. Thank you for your prayers, standing in the gap with your pastoral team during this time uh, that God will continue to work and to minister. We're glad to report uh, praise God that the state of the church um, is strong. I believe that uh, we're getting stronger each day spiritually. God is blessing and moving. Uh, we're strong financially. God is meeting the need. We're even reaching out in this time and, and giving more than what we have given. And so God has just proved to us, as our dear friend Brother Duke Downs taught us many years ago, if God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. And so we thank you for your faithfulness, Calvary Temple, in giving and uh, supporting the work of God continuing through, especially uh, this time. Before we get into the message tonight, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. We have different ones that are sick of our church family that are, that are sick. We want to pray that God will minister to them and heal them. We want to pray for these that certainly are suffering from this uh, coronavirus, um, that God would be merciful to them and raise them up and, and uh, uh, keep their families healthy. Uh, so that they will not become uh, sick with this disease as well. Uh, we also want to remember those on the front lines, the medical personnel who so bravely fulfill their duties and responsibilities daily. Uh, we have several uh, here in our church, here at Calvary Temple, who are part of this group, and uh, these uh, are on the front lines, day in and day out. Uh, some work at hospitals, some work at clinics, some are back and forth, uh, home health and, and different areas, and so they're still having to um, give assistance. They're still there to help us in our times of need and working, and so to them, first off, that are watching, I want to say thank you um, to those of you um, who are part of this church especially. Thank you for uh, your dedication and your commitment to your uh, profession during this time. And we want you to know that uh, your church is standing with you uh, in prayer, asking God to continue to uh, strengthen you and also to help you to stay healthy as you minister to the sick as well. So thank you for all that you're doing and may God doubly bless you for that. We want to continue to pray for all of our leaders, our uh, mayor and, and councilman here in the city of Saraland and all throughout the state of Alabama, our governor, uh, also our president, vice president, all of those in positions of, of leadership. I told someone today, uh, I certainly would not want to be a politician uh, in this hour. It's bad enough to be a politician at any time, but especially uh, in this hour when anything you do is going to be uh, subject to um, criticism from either side. So we want to lift up these leaders that God would uh, bless them, would strengthen them, and also would in, endue them with supernatural wisdom that as they are having to make these uh, very difficult choices and decisions um, that, that they will not have to make them alone. We pray that they will themselves look to the Lord and ask God to bless and strengthen and give them guidance on, uh, on what to do. And then also we certainly want to pray for this thing to be brought to a swift end um, so that life can uh, return to, 
to normal as what we are just so craving now. Normal has never looked so good as it does right now. And so we're going we're gonna to just pray and believe God that uh, his will is going to be accomplished. This thing is going to come to fulfillment. And uh, we're going to get on with the next phase and once again be able to see this house and all the other houses of worship filled with those that... Um, are going to come and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. So uh, join with me, amen, and let's pray tonight that God will touch and minister to these needs. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you tonight, Lord, that you see us and you know where we are. You see what we're facing, Lord, from, from, from the child of God to the pastor to the evangelist to the missionary to the leader, the president, the governor, on and on, everyone in a place of responsibility, be it, be it civic or be it Christian, whatever it is, God, whoever it is, I pray, God, that you would move in this hour. Lord, I pray that you would continue to keep your hand upon and about the medical work. Workers, Lord, those that are there, the nurses, the doctors, the therapists, all of those, Lord, as they fulfill their duties and go about their rounds, I pray that you would build a hedge of healing about them and strengthen them and keep them, Father. Those that are sick tonight, those that we've talked to this week and heard requests from, that you will touch them, Lord Jesus, with healing virtue because by your stripes we were healed. And you are the great physician and we commit all of these needs to you and Lord, Lord, I just pray, help us to be attentive to what you're doing in this hour, to hear the voice, to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And Father, I pray that as we move into the word tonight, that you will give weight to my words. And Lord, that you will speak to the heart and help us to hear tonight what you are saying in this hour. And we thank you for everything that's done and going to be done. In Christ's name, amen. I want to um, preach to you tonight concerning an episode in the life and ministry of Christ uh, that comes from the gospel of St. Mark chapter 4. We'll give you time to uh, turn there in your Bible and uh, just give you a little background on this before we get into it. On this particular day of ministry, we find the master teacher, Christ Jesus, turning a boat into a pulpit. Uh, and from the helm of this boat, he ministers not only to a huge crowd on shore, but he also ministers to many ships that are anchored nearby that have crowded in close to hear the word of the Lord. And so all day he, he, he teaches, he preaches, he ministers to them through the spoken word of Christ, through the power of the creative word. He shares with them words of destiny and words of power, words that would change their life if they would hear. And then... In the evening, as, as the day's teaching came to a conclusion, as the crowd slowly began to drift away, as the sun begins to sink low on the horizon, uh, we find that Jesus gives some instructions to his disciples now. And it says in Mark chapter 4 and verse 35, And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, to those disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. Now, these men, in their human thinking, uh, they had passed over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee many times. This was a voyage that was only going to take them maybe a couple hours at most. And uh, they did not anticipate any great problems. There was not anything on their uh, radar, so to speak, that gave them any concern about his admonition. But how many of us know that whenever you set out to follow God and do what Christ has instructed us to do uh, that we're going to run into some opposition. Amen. If you're living for God and you're not running into opposition tonight, you need to check up on your spiritual life because if you're living for God and you're endeavoring to do what God's called you to do, you're going to have some opposition from the enemy. 
And so as these men are in that boat and they're, they're, they're getting ready, they've pulled up anchor, they've got the sails, they've got the oars, they've assumed their, their position, these four men that are seamen, that are fishermen, uh, they, they've assumed their positions to take the boat across to the other side and thus do what Christ has told them to do. But what they did not realize was that their lesson for the day was not done, that their schooling for the day because they were about to enroll, ladies and gentlemen, in the school of stormy waters. I mean, they were about to get a lesson that they would never forget and it was such a powerful lesson that they were learning that night that the Holy Spirit said, I want that put in my word and I want my people to learn about it. I want the people of God to learn these lessons as well down through the passing of time. And so as we notice verse 30, seven here, the Bible said that they had gotten started and they're making their way. Now we don't know how, how far they had made their way from the shore headed to the opposite side. Well, we don't know that, but we do know one thing for certain and that is the Bible said in verse 37 and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And there arose a great storm of wind. I want to preach to you tonight for just a little while on this thought strengthened by the storm. Strengthened by the storm. Now I know what some of you are saying out there. You're just saying, wait a minute, Pastor. I think you got your wording mixed up a little bit. Uh, don't you mean that we're going to be strengthened in the storm? And uh, isn't that what you're talking about? But, but no, no, that's not what we're dealing with tonight. Amen. When you're strengthened in the storm, that's what Christ does for us during that particular time. That's how he blesses us. That's how he delivers us. That's how he gives us uh, uh, protection and provision and supplies miracles and so on and so forth. And so to be strengthened by the storm, amen, is not what Christ does for us. It is what Christ does in us. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen, there is a world of difference between what Christ does for us and what Christ does in us. Amen. And we're going to show that to you tonight because I guarantee you that all the saints of God, they're going to be ready to sign up for that class of what Christ does for us. Amen. We'll all want to be in that line. Hey, where's that class at that I sign up with God for blessings, that I sign up with God for anointing, that I sign up with God for gifts of the Spirit, that I sign up with God for God to use me and I can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover and I can cast out devils and I can pray the prayer of faith and I can do this and I, I can do all of this and I'll just be the devil's worst nightmare and I'll never want for anything and God's going to bless me every step of the journey, amen, and he's going to do all of these things for me. The rock's going to pour me out rivers of oil. The Lord's going to wash my steps in butter and man, it's going to be happy on the way to heaven, amen. Man, that's the class I want to sign up for. But can I tell you, there are precious few tonight, amen, who want to be schooled in the class of his inward work, amen, that has nothing to do with miracles, has nothing to do with the external, it has nothing to do with what I can do for somebody, amen, how that I can bless. It's not God using me to do something. It is God doing something in me. It is the fulfillment of what the apostle Paul call the forming of Christ within you. You see, there are those storms that we go through that God is merciful to us and he guides us through them and he keeps us and, and we come out of it no worse for the wear and everything is good. But then there are also those times, ladies and gentlemen, that he allows us to go through some great storm like this that came up so that we can not necessarily just see a miracle so that we will not necessarily see Jesus walking on the water to come to take us out of it so that we can see that he's not just a God that's able to turn stones into bread but that we can see and experience growth in our faith walk and in our spiritual life and be able to 
uh, have trust and develop trust in him. Amen. That's one of the things that he wants to do by strengthening us by the storm. Amen. He's using that storm of life that you're going through right now. Amen. Not to curse you, not to belittle you, not to drag you down. Amen. You're wondering, God, where's the deliverance? God, where's my check? Some of you hadn't got your money yet, hadn't got mine either. And you're saying, God, where's my trump check? I need that money. I'm in a financial storm. I'm in an emotional storm. Maybe your mother-in-law staying with you and she's about to eat you out of house and home. I don't know. But you're in a storm and so we're wanting God to do something for us. But there is a time because he is an all-knowing God who loves us and has a desire and a will for us that he says, I'm going to allow you to pass through this storm. Not that I can show you how great and how powerful I am. Not to show off to you what I'm about a mighty Messiah that I am but I want to show you what I want to do inside of you and that's why I'm not going to give you a shortcut listen to me beloved there are no shortcuts on the road to heaven there are no some somebody a lady years ago her son had gotten a, a part of a bank robbery and was in jail and she called me up and said where's that prayer at in the Bible that I can pray to get my son out of jail I said you don't need to pray a prayer to get him out of jail you need need bail, bail to get him out amen, you should have started working on him years ago that he wouldn't went that way and you should have let him come to church when you wouldn't let him come to the Pentecostal tongue talking church because you didn't want him to be a part of that crazy crowd down there amen, listen to me, there are no shortcuts, amen, nobody can prophesy it for you, nobody can impart it to you, you're going to have to bear the cross and pay the price, Jesus nobody walked up Calvary his road for him he had to walk his road and you and I are going to have to walk our own road and God allows us to pass through this for our benefit and growth amen so that Christ may be formed within us so the storms beloved are not to just prove God's faithfulness no no amen you see one of the things is that a storm of this great encounter, a storm of this magnitude, amen, will reveal where our faith lies and it will reveal the depth of our faith, amen. In the course of this, in the aftermath of this storm, after these disciples had gone through this storm, Jesus looks at them and says, boys, why were you so afraid? Amen. He says, how is it that you have no faith? Now, if you'd have told them at the beginning of this journey, amen, that they did not have any faith as what Christ defined faith, they would have been ready to thrown you off their ship and thrown you into the Sea of Galilee. They'd have said, man, I've sat here and listened to a 10-hour sermon. I've nodded my head so much I gotta have some Ben Gay to put on my neck. Amen. I've clapped my hands so much they're red and almost got a blister. How dare you tell me that I don't have any faith? Listen to me, beloved. It's easy to have faith when you're in a spiritual greenhouse. It's easy to have faith when the bills are paid, the spirits are high, and the bank accounts good anybody can serve God in that type of environment and we don't even many times realize how weak and vacillating our faith is in those hours and it is the storms of life these great storms not a little thunderstorm not a little summer squall that comes up amen not a tropical depression but I'm talking about a hurricane from hell that has come to destroy you and wants to sink your ship but God said everything's going to be all right. You might think you're going to drown. That, that storm beat into that ship so much that it was almost filled with water. And ships cannot be filled with water and keep floating. But thank God, uh, never forget this. As long as Christ is in your boat, you cannot sink. Hallelujah. Amen. And if, if you're like Peter, you might sink. But just because you sink don't mean you're sunk. And he'll raise you back up and you'll come out of there with a greater degree of a relationship with him than you've ever had in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. The storm, these great storms reveal 
how close to God we really are. You see, there's been some that's going into this quarantine. They thought they were a lot closer to God and a lot more godly. Amen. A lot more spiritual than what's been revealed during this time. Amen. And the devil is slowly, slowly pecking away. Amen. Hammering away at them. And they're not as strong as they thought they were. They're not as powerful in God as they thought they were. It's one thing to shout with a bunch of saints in a full house. It's another thing to worship God when you got a full praise team on the platform. Everybody is lifting up a cacophony of praise and it's resounding through the house and echoing through the heavens. My God, even a hypocrite get bent out of shape in an atmosphere like that and praise Praise God a little bit, but it's when we go through the storms that we prove really the depth of our relationship with God. These men had weathered many storms before. They had seen them, these four fishermen, they had seen these storms before and they'd weathered a lot of them and no doubt when that storm first came up, they thought, you know, we can handle this. We know what to do. Amen. I can see Peter's. He takes charge and tells one of them, hey, drop the anchor. The other other one, hey, pull down the sails. The other one, hey, let's get the oars in. We're going to have to ride out this thing and we know what to do. They knew the protocol to go through. They knew exactly the steps that they were to take. Why? Because they had done that in other storms and it worked before. But what they didn't realize was this was a divine appointment in the school of faith from God Almighty and God was going to use this, amen, to let them know just like he does us that sometimes beloved we're going to face storms that are beyond our control you can't borrow enough money to fix it the doctor can't prescribe enough money or enough medicine to heal it and a therapist cannot counsel with you long enough to give you peace about it there's going to come a time that you're going to say my God it's out of my control I can't fix my family I can't fix my children I can't fix my grandchildren I can't fix my spouse it is swirling out of control beyond my grip. Brother, that's the kind of storm that they were in. Oh, I'm talking about a gut-wrenching, nerve-twisting, sleep-stealing storm that threatens to sink your ship. You know, some of you watching, it's the kind of storm you're in right now. Amen, it's the kind of thing you can hear the winds of hell howling around you. You can hear the demon spirits laughing and telling you that you're not gonna make it. You're gonna go down. Amen. You don't, you don't have what you thought you had. And at that time, we realize, oh God, that's one time maybe the devil's telling the truth because all of my abilities are not enough. All of my strength is not enough. All of my Bible reading and my daily devotional app on my phone is not enough. I'm being beset by the kingdom of hell. The storm is swirling around me, the darkness has engulfed me the waves of doubt and despondency from the slew of despond are threatening to overtake my vessel, listen to me, God uses the school of storms to teach us ladies and gentlemen that it is not in our ability amen, he strips us of our self sufficiency it's not in how good you sing, it's not in how good we preach, it's not in how good the musician plays or the teacher teaches. Amen. It's in how good are we able to throw ourselves upon the mercy of God and rip my God quit fighting against the thing. Quit trying to fix it on your own. Quit trying to solve it on your own. Get shut in with God in a secret place. Amen. Get under the shadow of the wings of the Most High. Draw close to God in that storm. Realize first of all that this is a storm that you cannot survive on your own you got to have your own faith husband's faith is not going to do it wife's faith is not going to do it your pastor's faith your youth pastor's faith your Sunday school teacher's faith they're not going to cut it for you anymore you're going to have to have your own faith amen you see storms like this this great storm it strips us of our self sufficiency and one thing we in America are proud of is our self-sufficiency. Amen. That we can fix it, we can do it, we can win it, and we, 
we can overcome it. Amen. And there is a place for that thinking, but not in the spiritual life, beloved. Not in living for God. Not in that personal relationship of what God wants to do for us. Amen. God has nothing to do with a self-made man. God has nothing to do with a man that says, I've done all of this and I don't need God. God has nothing to do with that person. I can tell you who he comes nigh to, the broken and of a contrite spirit. Amen. That's who he comes to, those that realize, oh God, I'm not going to make it with Without you, I cannot survive this without you. Amen. See, too many of us tonight on this little journey to heaven, we just want a peaceful boat ride to the sweet by and by. Amen. We just want to float down the river of love and not have any ripples in our water and not have to go through anything and not have to face any test. Amen. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we must have a storm of this magnitude. Amen. That shakes everything in our life that shakes the very foundation of what which we stand upon. It is necessary if we are to become what God wants us to become. You see, there's one way that you see yourself and then there's another way, child of God, that God sees us and God sees us like you have not arrived. Well, preacher, I'm 80. I've been saved since I was in my mama's womb. I oh, know you still are not where he wants you to be. We're still striving, my God. We're still striving for Christ to be formed within us and strip us of our abilities and our talents and our, our, our riches and our way of thinking. Amen. And learn to trust wholly upon Jesus' name and not lean upon any other frame and say, Lord, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. It is through the storm and by the storm that God strengthens his children. Listen, great seamen are not made on the placid sea. Great seamen and shipmasters are not made in days of beautiful, easy sailing. I can tell you where they're made. The great seamen and the great shipmasters, they are made in the teeth of the most ferocious storms. They are made, they are cultivated, they are developed. They cut their teeth, amen, in the very storm that threatened to take their life. You know what I'm talking about. There are those storms that come against us and there are those storms that we can weather and we've got enough spiritual word, wherewithal and fortitude that we can overcome them. But then there are those storms that threaten to take everything away from us that is precious and dear. They threaten to take your children, your grandchildren, your marriage, your vows, your purity. They threaten to take all of that away. Amen. Because the devil has one thing in mind and that is to make shipwreck of your faith. Amen. But you've got to understand that God didn't send that storm to sink their boat. He did not send that storm. Amen. Because he's a vindictive God. Amen. Or a malevolent God. No sir. He sent that storm to reveal to them their shallowness that they did not have what they thought they had. Amen. But he also allowed them to see thank God that there was help with them. Listen to me. If it were not for these storms we would never know. Amen. The sufficiency of God and the greatness of God. Listen. Jacob had a birthright but it took a murderous brother to motivate him to use it. My God. Joseph had great dreams but it took a band of brutal brothers to cast him in a pit and turn his feet towards Egypt. Hannah was cruelly treated and verbally abused by Panina in that household but out of her affliction came forth the greatest prophet one of them that Israel's ever known by the name of Samuel Amen. Nehemiah God stirred him to build the walls around Jerusalem but it took a Sanballat and a Tobiah to motivate him to keep on working and say I'm doing a great work I cannot come down I'm doing a work for God and we're going to lay cement with one hand and hold a sword with the other. It takes the motivation of the storm to help us to see where we are and see where we need to get to and what God's purpose is. Oh, hallelujah. You see, this great storm, if we'll let it, beloved, will serve as a catalyst for Christ, moving us to him, rooting us and grounding us in greater faith and trust and a deeper depth in him than we've ever known. 
Amen. I believe you'll agree with me. Amen. As we look in especially even the New Testament, that after Pentecost came great persecution. After Peter's preaching, they came to prison. Amen. It was after great things and before it, that persecution came. They had to go through the fire. They had to be proven. They had to be tried. They had to be brought to a place of total dependency upon Christ. And God has not changed his methods. Amen. He's not interested in improving your credit score. He's not interested in improving your social standing or how many likes you're not getting on Facebook. He's not interested in that at all. What he is interested is, can you still serve him in the greatest storm of your life? Amen. When you ask for healing, you only got a diagnosis of death. When you ask for deliverance and your captivity got worse, when you ask for God to save your loved ones and they turned into worse sinners than you've ever known them possible. When everything you see is collapsing around you and threatening to be filled with the waves of hell, can you still say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you. Can you ride out your storm, amen, and realize, God, I'm not who and what I thought I was. Oh, hallelujah. I pray you're getting this tonight, that God is speaking to us. Amen. The storm serves as a measure of our growth. Amen. Thank God, finally, these men, after I don't know how long a time of rowing, but they finally realized, boys, we're not going to make it out of this on our own. We've never been in a storm like this. It ought to be let up by now. The wind should have changed by now. This boat should have, things should have been getting better by now. But it seems like it's only getting worse. And so the only thing they could do, the only thing that could save them was to wake up the master. Amen. Jesus is back there asleep, resting his head on a pillow of peace. Amen. Covering up, thank God, with the blanket of heavenly presence. And he's not worried at all. Amen. But notice that they came to him in verse 38 and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto them, now listen, isn't this just like us? Amen. Master, don't you care that we're perishing? Don't you care, Lord, that we're going to sink without having the sense to realize that he's in the same boat they're in? That if they, the only way they could sink, beloved, is for him to sink. And let me give you an encouraging word tonight, child of the living God. The only way the devil can destroy you is to destroy Christ. The only way the devil can destroy and stop the will of God is for me and you to pull the plug on it. But thank God I have determined to follow Jesus. And if you'll make up that in your mind. Amen. That he, I'm not going to blame God. I'm not going to point a, a finger at God. I'm not going to cast doubt or aspersions on God but I'm going to wake him up if I feel like he's asleep. I know there's times that we prayed and we wondered if anybody up there was listening. It seemed the heavens were as brass. Amen. We're caught up in that storm but don't you never doubt for one second that he sees us and he's with us. He said I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I'm with you all the way unto the end of the world. Praise God. And if your ship sinks, you know that he will provide a way. Abraham said, he's told me to kill my boy, but you guys stay here till me and the lad come off the mountain again because he had enough faith in God to know that if he killed Isaac, God would raise him up. Hallelujah. God give us enough faith like that. Grow us in this hour of salvation and superficiality and easy come and easy go that we can put down some roots and learn to trust him and say like Job though he slay me yet I'll trust him though I die of disease though he doesn't heal my body though I live in pain every day though I lose what I have if God be for me who can be against me oh hallelujah he'll strengthen us by the storm, even as those weightlifters, I can tell you they don't develop those impressive biceps by lifting a fork or a spoon. If they did, I'd look like the Incredible Hulk. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I can tell you how they get those toned muscles, bulging biceps. It's by lifting weights. 
And it's not lifting a 50 pound weight when they could lift a 150 pound weight. It is pressing. They say no pain, no gain. It is pressing forward, going to higher weights, going to a, 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 a harder routine, pushing themselves. Well, that's what God does in the spiritual because he knows what our potential is. God knows what you can become for God and the devil's got an idea of it and so he's going to work to try to stop that from happening and God is working to make it happen because God has a will and a plan and a purpose. Amen. God's in your ship. Not everybody that hears him is going to make it. The Bible said there were other little ships with them but it never said they made it to the other side so evidently they must have just sank because he wasn't in their ship and even those that was in his ship had a hard time hanging on to his word and believing faith and so they woke him up and they said you don't care about us you know I'm sure God gets aggravated with us sometimes he gets frustrated with us sometimes we're told don't grieve the spirit that means don't aggravate the Holy Ghost <laughs> amen but we are flesh and it does happen but he said, I want to grow your faith. And the only way to have great faith is to go through great storms. Amen. Listen, I'm coming to a close with this. I know you Calvary Temple folk can't believe that. But amen, it's happening. Praise God. Listen to me. The storm brought them to the place. They realized their insufficiency. And for a moment, they doubted his sufficiency as if he, whether or not he cared for them enough. I'm sure they were looking for him to show up until finally in desperation they sent someone to wake him up. But it was a test of their emergency faith system. And he was testing them and he was growing them. And when they stopped and called on Jesus, I want you to notice in closing what verse 39 said, that he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. Notice these words. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Listen to me, beloved. You cannot have great calm without going through a great storm. You cannot have it. But for every great storm, there is great calm. is the adversities and the setbacks of life that bring the greatest growth and peace to the child of God. It is in our affliction, he said, that he saw the Lord. Our heart breaks more than in our hallelujahs we see him. More in our mourning than in our rejoicing of our greatest encounters, some of my greatest encounters with God and most memorable times have come out of some of the greatest difficulties of my life physically and spiritually. I found out in great storms he's still in my boat. He has not left me. He's not abandoned me. He's still there. His purpose is accomplished become a great calm. Hey, if the sun's going to stand still for you, you got to be in the battle of your life. If you want to drink sweet water, you're going to have to taste bitter water first. Oh, glory to God. If you want to eat manna, you're going to have to know what it is to get hungry and dissatisfied with where you are. If you want to see an axe head float in the river, you're going to have to be chopping down a tree for God and being busy and let it fly off and then see what God will do. Amen. Out of that travail, out of that heartache, he's going to bring blessing and growth. Hallelujah. Let the storm, let this great storm that we're in now, the church ought to come back very soon when we come back, we ought to come back with greater faith, greater trust, greater intimacy with Christ than we've ever had. 
if, if this time does not draw us closer to him than ever, I shudder to think what it will take. Let us use the storm. See that God has a purpose in the great storms, in all storms, but especially for the child of God in the great storms. And he allows them to be a teacher, to school us in the ways of the Spirit and the dealership of the Spirit, to bring us to a place to where we know that it's in him, that our sufficiency is in him. Learn to trust him that he will provide. In doing so, we're able to commit everything to him because the storm will bring us to that place that all we've got left to do is call on God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word tonight. For God breathed, spirit inspired, heaven ordained word of God that is forever settled in the heavens. I thank you that this word is a lamp and a light and a hammer and bread for the hungry, meat for the hungry, water for the thirsty. It is the word that reveals to us the workings, the way, and the wisdom of God. I pray for those right now that find themselves in a great storm of life. Help them, Lord, to realize they cannot fight their way out of this one. They cannot do enough themselves to get out of this. That we've got to let go and let you. And in so doing, we'll realize that we are not sufficient. But we'll hear the apostle as he describes. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So I pray for those right now that have watched tonight and will watch. That you will touch them in their great storms. That you will minister to them. And bring us to the place that we can learn the lesson of faith. And be strengthened not in the storm this time. But by the storm, to learn that you use the great storms of life to teach us lessons of your love and your mercy and your grace. Grow. Walk with you. Bless each one that's listened tonight. In Jesus' name. I pray that you've been blessed by this time in the word. I encourage you to read this story. Read this chapter all the way through to its conclusion. Let the Lord minister to you through it. Amen. Think on what we have mentioned tonight. Let God stir us. Join us back Sunday morning, 1030. May God bless you is our prayer. And we'll see you soon. Amen.